you don't want a new MMORPG. You, you think, think you, you do, do, but you, you don't. don't. This might sound stupid if you're a fan of MMORPGs. I mean, if there's one thing gamers love, it's games. And if there's another thing gamers love, it's bacon. <laughs> Cause bacon is epic sauce. Erm, um, one does not simply resist bacon. Either you love bacon, or you're wrong. But MMORPGs aren't like other games. You don't spend a hundred hours at most running through a campaign before dropping it and switching to the next game. Most MMO players will spend months, if not years, and even decades in some cases, playing the same game day in and day out. Playing these games becomes this nasty, unkickable habit, like smoking a cigarette. Unfortunately, doing your weekly Blackwing Lair lockout doesn't make you look nearly as cool as smoking a cig does. When a new MMORPG tries to enter the market, it doesn't just have to capture the hearts and minds of players by being a good game, it has to convince those players to abandon what they're already super invested in. And the even deeper problem than that is the people they're trying to appeal to don't even know what they want. Hell, I don't know what I want, but I do know who I am, and thanks to a recently stolen election, I am still Idol, the president of MMORPGs. And with this hammer, I'm going to fix the genre I am going to fix the genre that has been broken for far too long in the opinions of many. So I'm here to figure out what's wrong with you. I can't take this guy seriously. God? I mean, bald, patchy facial hair, green tights, yuck. I hate this guy. I hate him a lot. But there is one thing I like about him, and that's his beautiful shirt. Introducing Into the AM, the hottest apparel in menswear since the introduction of the bolo tie in 1954. You've got hot graphic tees that can be as minimal or as loud as you want. Look at this beautiful tan shirt with the minimal palm tree design just in the corner. You know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and take this shirt. Thank you very much. Into the AM has more than just shirts though. They have flannels, quarter zips, sweatpants, and more. Anything you can imagine, they've got. And if you like what you see, then I have good news. From now until December 8th, you can get the Cyber Monday deal, which will give you up to 60% off. You can use this deal to get a head start on gifts for the holidays or just treat yourself because hey, you deserve it. And if you click the link below right now or use the code IDOL at checkout, you can get an additional 10% off. So if you don't do it, you're actually just losing money. I know you want to look this good. Yuck, I don't like that, but I do like you. So go to the link in the description right now, please, and get your awesome apparel, please, now. So the original creator of RuneScape, Andrew Gower, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Ball, I mean Idol, just released a new game called Brighter Shores. People were really excited to see the first new MMORPG from such a legendary guy. And then they played the game. And then they weren't excited anymore. I played the game a lot, and I had thoughts that were mostly bad. And if you want to see those, you can check out my second channel, Idol Slop. Link in the description or link in your butt. But the recent disappointments of games like Brighter Shores and Throne and Liberty and even New World got me thinking. What do we actually want from an MMORPG? Well, let's take a look at some MMO history, shall we? Can't really read my script from here, so this is gonna be tough. According to some experts, MMORPGs have been around for almost as long as the pyramids, and perhaps even not as long as that. And in that time, there have been a lot of MMORPGs. Almost too many to count. 231. According to my data set, since 1997 there have been over 220 MMOs released. For context, there have been just about as many Fast and Furious movies released in the past two decades if there were 220 Fast and Furious movies. You might hear that number of MMORPGs and think, wow, they must be doing really well, that's a lot of new games, I thought there were only like five MMORPGs, but the truth is the data is a little bit darker than that. As you can see on this sick-ass pine chart I made, over 37% of MMOs have closed since 1997. That's a pretty high failure rate. To put it into perspective, imagine if 37% of bridges you drove across exploded. You probably wouldn't drive over many bridges. This number could actually be even higher since a bunch of MMOs have closed down regional servers, now making them only available in Asia or Europe or North America and no longer available worldwide. But as cool as this pie chart is, it 
too doesn't tell the full story. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Excel tutorial I watched only taught me how to make a pie chart. Oops, psych, egg on your face. I learned how to make bar charts too, or whatever this chart's called. It's pretty cool though, isn't it? On this chart, we can see the number of MMOs released versus the number of MMOs closed year over year. As you can see in the early and mid 2000s, things were going really great for MMORPGs. There's a lot of blue here and blue is good. And there's not a lot of red, then red is bad. But then as we head into the early 2010s, things take a turn for the worse. We start to get a lot more closures until 2014, which is the first year where closures actually outnumber the number of releases. And we even get a couple of years where closures are the only thing that happens, which is pretty crazy to look at. But hey, look at 2024. Still going strong, no closures. <laughs> Hope I don't jinx it. Don't, no, no one die. Full disclosure, I got all this data from Wikipedia, so someone could have edited in a new MMO called Butt Blaster 69, and I wouldn't have noticed. I didn't check the data set, so uh, do your own research. <sighs> but what you can trust is that the failure rate of MMORPGs is alarmingly high, especially when you consider that MMOs are really expensive to make. That's why the only really big MMOs we've gotten lately have been from Amazon Game Studios, which is in part owned by a guy who can go up to space in a penis rocket. <laughs> That's a special kind of wealth. But even with these triple A or even <laughs> quadruple A MMORPGs, they really struggle to capture the market in any meaningful way. So what gives? Did people just forget how to make good MMORPGs? Have we forsaken the ancient texts handed down to us on top of Mount Olympus by Jeff Kaplan when he made the original World of Warcraft design? Yeah. Maybe. I'm not here to tell you that New World was actually a really good game. I played New World. It was actually not a very good game. And Brighter Shores, which I've already mentioned a little bit, is just such a hollow experience that it's not worth playing when you could spend your time invested in much more established and fleshed out MMORPGs. But a much deeper problem than the games just not being all that good is that I'm not convinced there's a huge market for new MMOs in general, as much as players and people like me might try and cope and say there is. The population of MMO players has shrunk dramatically thanks to games like League of Legends and Valorant and Fortnite that have taken the multiplayer scene and really dominated it for the past decade. MMOs used to be completely unique in terms of the multiplayer genre. I mean, when World of Warcraft came out in 2004, Xbox Live was only two years old and still required a monthly fee, so it wasn't nearly as full as it is today. So MMORPGs like World of Warcraft that did have a monthly fee would still become eternally popular. And there was also RuneScape, which was a big free-to-play game, and established games like Ultima and EverQuest that had already been going since the late 90s. Back in my day, you couldn't just launch a Minecraft server with some friends or join a massive SMP server where you could talk to underage children, we had to talk to children our own age. And these days you can just launch Roblox and find cool servers like the one where you kill other people with a suite of fart based attacks. This is technology. <laughs> MMOs were the truest multiplayer experiences you could get back then. And that's just not the case anymore. So the market has spread out. And the people who are still here, like me and presumably you if you're watching this video, don't really know what we want. Yeah, it's easy to say, I want an MMO that is new and modern, but captures the feeling of the old days and the paradigms of classic MMORPGs. But that's like going to McDonald's and ordering a quarter pounder with cheese and a Happy Meal toy that will cure all of my anxiety. That just doesn't, it oh wait, hold on, Mario Kart toys are at Happy Meals now? and you can change out the wheels? This is so cool! Seriously though, here are just some of the MMORPGs that have released in the past decade. Shroud of the Avatar, a game made by Richard Garriott, the original creator of Ultima Online, which is considered by many to be the first true MMORPG. This game was supposed to be the spiritual successor to Ultima Online, but it ended up being more like the spiritual successor to a small college lecture because that's about how many people play the game. <laughs> you have Wildstar, a sci-fi MMORPG made by some legendary RPG game designers like Tim Kaine, who made the original Fallout game and tons of other classics. I played this game when it came out in 2014. It was genuinely very good. A lot of people didn't play it and it shut down four years later. That's a real shame, but the market just wasn't there. You've already heard me talk about New World. 
it's not terrible, but it's also not good. And for that reason, despite it being one of the most hyped MMOs I can remember launching in recent memory, it didn't have the staying power people hoped it would. I mean, seriously, it's not even New World anymore. It's New World Aeternum, a solo-based action RPG. They don't even want to be an MMORPG anymore. But in all fairness, I can think of at least four MMORPGs from the past decade that have succeeded. You have Final Fantasy XIV, a game that after it nuked itself in 2011 and relaunched in 2014 as a Realm Reborn, became one of, if not the biggest MMORPG out there. Listen, I'm not trying to diminish the success of this game, but I don't think it would have had the opportunity to get this popular if it was called something like Cat Girls Solve Crime Online. Okay, maybe it would have gotten like a really popular if it was called that. A lot of people tried out Final Fantasy XIV because it was called Final Fantasy. The same goes for Elder Scrolls Online, a game that, again, I know has some really good parts to it. But would people have given it a try and really stayed with it if it wasn't part of one of the most iconic RPG series of all time? I think probably not. And then you have two of the most iconic MMORPGs released this decade. Old School RuneScape, which is just a re-release of RuneScape as it was in 2007. It's hard to call that a new MMO, but it kind of is. I mean, it's not RuneScape anymore, it's its own beast. And then in 2019, you get World of Warcraft Classic, a game that is still massively popular despite receiving absolutely no changes in those five years since its release. So of the successful MMOs we have in the past decade, Two of them are from established franchises, and two of them are re-releases of games from a lot of people's childhood. That doesn't really show how people want something new, does it? All the MMOs that were, in every sense of the word, new, struggled to stick around. And the way I see it, there's three big reasons for that. Reason number one. I need to check the script. MMORPGs are high investment games. That is no surprise to anyone who plays them. You'll always hear players say, oh, the game gets good at 100 hours. The game gets good at 200 hours. Oh, well, the first 500 hours are actually just the tutorial. And after that, you really start to understand what the game's all about. By the way, bad game design. <laughs> That's just bad. But the point that gets across is that MMOs are games that you will spend a minimum of hundreds of hours in if you're going to play them to any significant degree. And this makes it doubly hard for the genre to get players into new games. First of all, you need to convince players to drop the games they've played for hundreds if not thousands of hours, and then you need to convince them to play your game for hundreds if not thousands of hours. Sure, you could make an MMO that maybe doesn't need to be played for hundreds if not thousands of hours, but then you're probably just making, like, an RPG. You should probably just make an RPG, to be honest. And looking back at that failure rate of MMORPGs, it's really tough to convince yourself to switch to a new game and invest hundreds of hours there when, in a year from now, it could all be gone. The game could literally just be shut down. You can feel pretty confident if you're playing games like Elder Scrolls Online, RuneScape, World of Warcraft, that your progress won't be gone anytime soon. That makes it even harder to pull people away from their established games. Reason number two, I'm trying to look like a two. Beyond just material investment of money and time into existing MMOs, players have an emotional investment into these games. Imagine going up to an iPhone user and being like, hey, try out this cool new Android phone. It has features that you might find objectively better than your iPhone. They'll look at you first like you're crazy, and then they will spontaneously combust into hellfire. That's just how it works, I don't make the rules. The reason for this is just because people are creatures of habit. They like what they like. They like the frictionless experience when they wanna relax and log onto a game. They don't want to relearn new mechanics or anything like that. So even if a new MMO comes out and does have a ton of objectively better features than some of the popular games out there, people will just stick with what they know unless they're given a really, really compelling reason to switch over. And reason number three, check that out. <laughs> just for you. MMORPGs, despite the rise of solo gameplay, are inherently social games, even to this day. No matter how you play these games, there's a good chance you have at least a few friends you talk to while playing it. Maybe it's a guild you're super active in and you do raids and PvP every single week, or it's just a casual leveling guild where you just talk while you do some quests on your own. And even if it's not in the game itself, maybe you're just on a Discord call with a few friends who are playing that same MMO as you, and it's a cool way for you guys to 
all bond and relax. All of these bonds are built through these MMORPGs, and you can't recreate that through mechanics or graphics or anything on the technical side. A lot of people say that MMORPGs were the original social networks, and I think that's true when you look at how competition works in social networks. Twitter is an objectively bad site. No one likes it. Literally no one likes this site, but the competitors struggle to get any traction because despite having some really great and objectively better features than Twitter, what it doesn't have is all those existing connections you made. Really, the only way we've ever seen massive switches from one social platform to another is when the original just fucks up real bad. You guys might not remember dig.it. It was Reddit before Reddit. Around 2010, they started making some um, bad decisions repeatedly that made the site just really unusable. Like, it was so dumb, dude. And that's how Reddit got popular. It didn't do anything spectacular out of the box to convince people to leave Dig. Dig convinced people to leave Dig, and Reddit was just there, ready to accept all the refugees. This is something we've seen happen in MMORPGs. About five years ago, World of Warcraft was just wrapping up Battle for Azeroth, one of its least popular expansions ever, and it had just released Shadowlands, one of its least popular expansions ever. Doing that back to back is what we call bad. So swarms of frustrated WoW players looking to scratch that MMO itch in a different way had to find a new game, and that game was Final Fantasy XIV. WoW's failures coupled with the pandemic launched Final Fantasy XIV to being the most popular MMO in the world, a title that had belonged to WoW in an almost uninterrupted streak since like 2005. Again, Final Fantasy XIV does some good stuff, but what really pushed people to try it out and stick with it was another game, the titan of the MMO industry, faltering in a big way. What this proves to me, and hopefully to you, is that a new MMO that comes out can genuinely do everything right but that still might not be enough unless an external factor plays into the success. What these new MMOs need to be able to do is sustain themselves on not peak player counts at all times so that hopefully in a few years something does happen that causes a shift. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. And stop thinking that. It's a crime to think that and I will report you to the cyber police. But I know what else you're thinking because I'm thinking it too. Maybe your friends and the general MMO player doesn't want a new MMORPG. But you do. You would invest your time into a new game if it was worthy of that time. All right, that's great. Good, good, good for you. Good for you, little guy. <laughs> Can I, champ? Good for you, champ. Let me ask you this though. What do you want from a new MMORPG? What does it have to have to convince you that it is worth investing your time into? Do you want a brand new modern MMORPG that maybe genre blends and does things that we've never seen before? Do you want a new MMO that puts a modern twist on the classic design principles? Do you want a Nintendogs MMO? We all want a Nintendogs MMO. I would kill for a Nintendogs MMO. I would kill everyone for you, little guy. But when I talk to people who play MMORPGs and I look at the landscape of new MMORPGs, all I see is more of the same. Old School RuneScape and World of Warcraft Classic are two of the most popular MMORPGs out right now. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I like both of these games a lot, but I think the case is that there's a very thin strip of runway for a new MMO to land on. And if you manage to thread that needle, you'll please the core audience of MMORPGs by maintaining the status quo of the last five, 10, 15, 20 years. And a new MMO is gonna have a really hard time doing that while differentiating itself from the other games out there. Going back to Brighter Shores, my big issue with this game is that it actually feels too much like RuneScape. When I play it, I think, well, if I'm gonna spend time here, I guess I should just play RuneScape, which is the better version of Brighter Shores. And this was something we saw all the time back in the day when every new MMO was going to be the WoW killer because it did things mostly like World of Warcraft. But when players would play it, they would usually leave because all their friends and their time and investment on World of Warcraft was on World of Warcraft. Why would they play a different game that feels like it, but slightly different? This mindset of not wanting anything new obviously doesn't apply to every MMO player. I mean, Warframe is an extremely popular MMO from the past decade, and it's not like anything else, and it is really successful. But that's the exception that proves the rule. 
That's a saying I really hate, but I'm gonna use it because it proves my point. The question this should naturally lead us to is, what does this mean for the MMORPG genre and its future? If you'll join me on the Monopoly board, I'll give you a little business lesson. Competition is good. It, it makes people innovate. Let's go capitalism. <laughs> But with so few new MMOs coming out and closures happening more and more every year, except for 2024, you keep going, little guy. Look at you go. The market doesn't have anything to compete against. World of Warcraft can keep doing what World of Warcraft wants to do. New games can keep introducing more microtransactions because where else are you gonna go, little guy? <laughs> I'd like to see you quit. <laughs> And at this rate, we have new players coming to the genre at a slower rate than veterans are leaving it. I know this is the case because I saw it in a video recently. It was this video. I said it in this video. The only thing that still gives me faith, though, is that I do believe MMORPGs are still truly unique experiences. Yes, there are more multiplayer games out there that can scratch that social gaming itch, but MMORPGs still are the only truly persistent, massive world where you can interact with thousands and even hundreds of thousands of players at the same time. It's something unlike any other game. And I think one day we'll see a change that revitalizes the genre. Maybe not to the peaks of 2004. I think those days are just behind us, but maybe to a new peak with something totally different. That would be great. I'm not ruling that out. But what I am saying is that's going to be super hard to do because we're all little goblins and we, we just want to play our little games and we want to drink Mountain Dew. So the genre is in a tough spot. Wait, is that my... Are these my patrons? What's going on? Why, why isn't the Patreon song play? Play, play the Patreon song! Play, play the Patreon song! Hey, you're a patron. Thank you so much for your support. Hey! You're a patron. I like you very much. Cause hey, you're a patron. Patreon is where you're at. You went to the URL in the description and you gave me your money and that's pretty neat. Hey, you're a patron. Thank you so much for your support. Hey, you're a patron. I like you very much. Cause hey, you're a patron. Patreon is where you're at. You went to the URL in the description and you gave me your money and that's pretty neat.